is thinner and it's bumpy for the show, but it's compact. And uh, so, uh, in our case, S is always a strong proper type. It's likely to respond to the condition that G has no proper factor. And uh, S has a non positive curvature. And this condition is equivalent for any two geodesics, C1, C2, uh, geodesic. Uh, the distance function. Correspondence of <coughs> uh, just example. So we move for G, uh, P, S, uh, for example, uh, two R, uh, S will be that polyplane. Uh, if G is uh, P, S, uh, two C. Then S is a poly three dimensional space. Uh, more generally, these two examples are part of a family which is a S O N one, P S O N one, and then in that case, the symmetric space is H N. N equals two, you get this group, and if N equals three, you get this group. Uh, so this nice family of examples, uh, they're all rank one symmetric spaces. So uh, <coughs> example of a higher rank symmetric space is uh, if G is S L M R so that M is at least uh, three, then uh, symmetric space uh,
connection on, of G on, on this space uh, is by similarity. So G, uh, an element in this group, acts on the positive definite matrices by this formula. This, and then you see that the stabilizer of the, the identity matrix is a point here, and stabilizer is SOM, uh, and the orbit is, uh, the action is positive, and, uh, and okay, we can speak more about this example, you can exactly write the Riemannian uh, metric. Uh, one thing, I hope SLM, to be precise, I should write here, SLM, so let's speak about sample three group. Uh, but I will make these mistakes occasionally and, and but it's also good to make this mistake because then I can write formulas. If I were PSLN I couldn't multiply, it's not matrices anymore. So. But it's okay, the center is already going to the proper group, so don't worry about that. Okay. So now let's fix the symmetric space. To fix G. <coughs> so if I fix G, I also fix S. Uh, and uh, how measure of G? I also fix the how measure. And uh, I assume that uh, which corresponds uh, to the Riemannian measure. So you have a map from G to G, from G to S, just the question mark by A, and you push forward the how measure, you get the measure on S, both measure and invariant under the action of G, and, and therefore by, uh, so by how theorem, uh, the how measure is unique up to normalization, uh, and uh, and up to normalization, you can fix it that it's to the correspond to this question. So, but I want to fix the normalization. And, uh, <coughs> and then, definition, yes. and S manifold, so sometimes I will also say S O before, mostly S manifold is uh, a complete uh, Riemannian manifold uh, locally isometric to S. So any point is a neighborhood which is isometric to a neighborhood in S. So, and then uh, follow from uh, basic uh, uh, Riemannian theory that uh, actually an S manifold is only the form uh, S manifold. Every torsion element is fixed a point. 
So if you want closure and free, if you want many flows, so you have to do the gap is known as free. Uh, <coughs> and uh, also vice versa. If gamma is closure and free, then you can cap any element which is non trivial cannot fix the point, because the several items of the point is discrete, is a compact and gamma is discrete, and if you're discrete and compact, you're higher. So so that's exactly the situation. <coughs> and uh, then the volume of M is also by our normalization is the whole volume of if you want the volume of G mod gamma. So here I'm using this by definition is the volume of uh, the half measure of fundamental domain of gamma G. This is the remaining volume of the, of the question. Yes. Okay, G mark K mark gamma. Sorry? G mark K mark gamma perhaps? G mark K mark gamma? We just took it. Uh, yeah, S is M is S mark gamma. Ah, yeah. S, S itself is G mark K. S, S is, S is, yeah. M, M is, M is uh, G mark K mark gamma. I want I just want to, to revise on this, yes. So G is only modular, so it's not so important, but yes, it's yes, yes, uh, important to write this way. <coughs> and, uh, and gamma is a lattice. Lattice. Uh, if uh, this volume is final. So that's, if you want, the definition of a lattice. So more generally, you can think as O defaults, then the same definition when we don't consider torsion free, and then you can think that's the definition of a lattice. So we will be interested mostly in this. And maybe just a remark, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between a lattices G correspond one to one to S of the form of finite volume and inside this, if you want the torsion free lattices uh, torsion free lattices. Correspond to S manifold. <coughs> so, any theorem you can say about the family of this manifold is just a theorem of the family of lattices and vice versa. So, to, to, to study the, if you want the, the family of all lattices in PSO2C, the same as studying the family of all hyperbolic free manifold of the profile point. And we would like to restrict to such a family and to oh, so <coughs> even more uh, restrictively, uh, from the definition there is one parameter which is the volume. And uh, <coughs> It's natural, it's natural to ask what, uh, what information is carried out in this part. So what data is encoded uh, in this one parameter, the volume of the manifold. It's just, this is a very general question. Let me just write it. Suppose I give you a manifold, a uh, five dimensional hyperbolic manifold, and I only tell you its volume. So, what can you say about the manifold? <coughs> you, can, you can even ask, suppose we know that our universe is a hyperbolic manifold of, uh, and it's for some local symmetric manifold, and suppose we can measure its volume somehow. 
And what can you say about topology, for instance? So, what can we say about uh, M uh, knowing only uh, <coughs> only in one power? So, so, okay, let me just uh, give a, an example of a non -stopper. Uh Suppose uh, S is a two dimensional full space. So, uh, just a hyperbolic plan. And uh, okay, I also suppose that M is compact because we can assume that. And M is the S one gamma as compact. Then we all so M is the hyperbolic surface. And uh, we know that the hyperbolic surface is uh, is topologically characterized by by its own characteristic. But the volume of M is uh, given by minus the Euler characteristic of M, so by the gauss bonnet theorem, because the gauss bonnet theorem will tell you that the Euler characteristic is the integral of the curvature. The curvature is constant minus 1. So you get this. And this is exactly uh, 2G minus 2, where G is the going of this picture is 3. So if you know the volume, you know everything. At least topological. You don't know the geometry, but you know you know what is the manifold topological. Still, there is in dimension two there is the whole tightening of space of the formation of the whole structure. There is for this specific picture there are continuity many hyperbolic structure. This is very special to dimension two. In higher dimension, if you know the topology of the manifold, you will know exactly the isometry type. So. But, so, so this example tells you that in dimension two, the volume tells you everything, in a sense, or at least everything about the topology. <coughs> and I could also consider a non-compact manifold. Then you would have cast, but the volume control also the number of cast, and you can also tell everything about the Okay, so this is very nice situation. You cannot expect. In general, that the volume will tell you all the information. It's not true in general, but uh, okay. But we, we want somehow to say that the volume still control the topological complexity. So, in a sense, I want to say that if the volume is bounded, then the topology cannot be too complicated. So I can control the topology of the manifold. The topology of the manifold is controlled by the, by the volume. So here is an important definition uh, for this series of lectures. Uh, uh, D, C, simplicial complex. So D is an integer and V is a positive number. So what integer positive number. So right now D will be a fixed integer depending on the symmetric space, and V will be the volume of the manifold. So D V simplicial complex is a simplicial complex which at most V vertices uh, so I don't want to say precisely V but at most V vertices all of them of D 
Security.
So M is manifold M. Homotopical equivalent to essential. So you can verify that the conjecture is true in this case. In dimension, in dimension uh, two, you can by hand you can construct this equation complex. You can actually construct a triangulation here using boundary many triangles. It's not the it's not a hard exercise. <coughs> but the following conjecture suggests that it should be true uh, for every symmetric space. Uh, then every oh I think right, then every irreducible yeah, yeah sorry. Every irreducible Actually, the only problem you can erase if you have uh, three-dimensional factors and the manifold is reducible in this factor. But okay, let's assume it's irreducible. Then conjecture should be true. In dimension three, it's not true. So in dimension three, manifold could be quite complicated. So that's maybe the beauty of dimension three. We could still say something about the whole of the time in dimension three. So later I would say, or at least let's say that let's add to the conjecture if if uh, S is a string, the same hold, the same should hold. For uh, arithmetic, let's say. And there's no restriction on D in the conjecture. Uh, D depends on S. D and alpha. So it may, it's not just dependent on the dimension. Uh, so, okay, let me give a dimension. There are only five too many symmetric space. So you, you can, if so if you want, D depend on the dimension. Only dimension. Yeah. But for me, S is fixed, and the, the, the constant alpha and D will depend on S. So oh, S, S and, we, and actually, you will see, okay, I'm not going to prove the conjecture, but I'm going to prove theorems related, and you will see that you can actually compute this constant. And the... Uh, uh, in dimension three, uh, at least for the arithmetic, it should be still correct. Uh, for non arithmetic, it's not correct, but still we could say something. It's later, uh, later on, say, same uh, <clears throat> So, okay, so let, let me just state uh, two theorems that I'm going to prove. Number one is that the conjecture of all for non-uniform arithmetic groups. The conjecture is true uh, for non-uniform, or maybe yeah, non-uniform arithmetic. So by the way, don't, don't hesitate to interrupt me if you have a question or remark. Uh, I don't know if you're used to this. So non-uniform is the same as non-compact. Uniform is compact in this, uh, <coughs> this language. And the uh, arithmetic, a manifold is arithmetic if the fundamental group is arithmetic lattice in, in G. So by the conjecture is not true for S equal to string non Arithmetic case. So I, I will. Reason is... You will see. So, <coughs> so I, I will remark about it. Later. I don't know. If, uh, but uh, the conjecture holds for for non uniform uh, arithmetic manifolds. So, uh, so now let's discuss the uh, arithmetic manifold and the. Uh, Classical 
result of all the channels that it makes manifold are always of finite volume, and the contours of modulis that in higher rank if you find volume of arithmetic, and so this is an important example. It is in higher rank all manifold arithmetic, and. The theorem says that in some sense, a non uniform one, the non compact, are easier to deal with. And we will see. And uh, so, you know, when you, when you work with lattices, sometimes it's much easier to assume that they are co compact, they are uniform. And sometimes it's much easier to assume that they are non co compact. So, in this case, it will be, it will be simpler to deal with non uniform. And uh, the second result is about uh, general uh, general uh, in general case, or also the compact case. But in, in the second result, uh, okay, the result will be a, weak, a bit weaker, and also I have to exclude several cases that I don't know how to deal. So in the following, suppose. By the way, so here I can here this holds also for the three-dimensional case. For non arithmetic it's also. But now we suppose that uh, that S <coughs> is not a hyperbolic space, because then it's not true. But I also suppose that it's not uh, it's four-dimensional space. Uh, Although it's supposed to be true here, but I don't know how to prove it. And there is another case, which I don't know, it's, it's the five-dimensional uh, symmetric space of SL3R. So uh, let's write it as SL3R or SL3R. Okay. Okay. So this, uh, this case, the theorem is false. Theorem that I'm going to state here. And in this two case, just the proof doesn't apply. I don't know how to do it. But then the theorem. Under this assumption, uh, in that case, there are two constants. Spherical, I mean, right? that's yes. Otherwise, it yeah. would be the same thing. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's a good remark. So, so first, uh, okay. So first, let me just say that this theorem, although it says only something about fundamental group, it's a very strong result in a sense because the fundamental group, which we draw by gamma, uh, actually, by its most rigidity, determines n. So, uh, let me just recall most rigidity. which says that uh, gamma, the fundamental group, determines M. So, so if, uh, let's say, not in dimension 2, so if in S is not true, uh, again, I, I keep forgetting 
forgetting, but I, I always assume he will do it. And as I said, it's not so important, but if you may assume that there are three different factors and there are identical things you want to say. So if, this, if, if it's not the H2, uh, uh, and the uh, M1 and M2 are S manifold of final volume, and the I1 of M1 is the same as I1, the anamorphic of I1 of M2, then M1 is isomorphic to M2. So the fundamental group determines the many states. So in, in, a, in a sense, to say something about the fundamental group is enough. It says, it tells you everything about it. This is a, but still, this is weaker because we don't know the higher, we don't know that it's actually equivalent to the <coughs> On the other hand, we know that M, we know that the uh, locally symmetric manifolds are K pi 1, so the, the higher homotopy group are trivial, so the universal color is contractible. So the only homotopy group which is non trivial is the fundamental group. So, so maybe you can deduce from this that uh, actually M is homotopic to such a special complex. But when we construct the special complex, it will not be aspherical. There will be, but then you can still argue, okay, maybe, <coughs> maybe you construct something which is not aspherical, but then you start to fill, to fill the spheres and, and kill the higher homotopy group and make it aspherical, and then it will actually be homotopic. And I don't say it's a bad idea, but it may work. In, in a sense, I, I never tried seriously to do it. it okay, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't obviously work, because uh, you, you still want it to be D alpha of this initial complex. And when you start to do it, you, you can add a lot of uh, synthesis. So uh, it's not clear how to do it, but it may, I don't say it's. It's, it's very, it's really easy to try. I, mean, I, I, I never tried seriously. Uh, because what, when I proved this result uh, 10 years ago, uh, it's, uh, it's, to me it seems uh, quite strong uh, for the coke. Uh, I will explain the, some consequences soon. But uh, of course, it's, it's very good to try to prove this formula. So, so, so let me just state there are several consequences of this. So, particularly, tells you. <coughs> let, let me just write uh, two consequences. Uh, sorry, <coughs> does R inherit any geometric properties like cat zero as is on positive curvature in the most sense? With the situation between. It's a purely topological yes. information. Yes. Yes. So let me just write two corollaries. So the corollaries are either of, let's say, of, of theorem two. So theorem two is a bit more general. So, uh, but it, it follows also from theorem one. But then the corollary is, is a bit different. It's only for non-complex arithmetic. I'll just say, suppose that S is as a ball. Suppose that S is not a. Uh, uh, H3, H2 cross H2, and uh, uh, 
I, I think this, let, let me this denote it uh, like this. Uh, one, three. Uh, one is because SLN is determined at one. I, I think, but I don't remember if, I, I can check what the intention is. Uh, so suppose S is not one of these. Uh, then there is, uh, actually it's better to state it uh, for, in terms of G. So the G is not SL2R, SL2C, SL2R square, or SL3. Uh, then there is a constant C, a, a, a real positive constant, such that for every uh, irreducible <laughs> torsion free lattice uh, gamma. G. So by the way, uh, in short, when I in, write this, I mean that gamma is a lattice in G. A lattice is a discrete subgroup of finite group polymer. This is my notation. So when, for any closure free lattice, uh, admits a representation, a presentation, And write it in terms of generators and relations, and you need only a very small number of generator and relations, such that uh, the size, the number of relations, and the number of generators, so these are generators, these are relations, are both bounded by C times the volume. Usually I make a lot of spelling mistakes. So if it's bad, 
as you tell me, if not the person, I think it's in particular I'm not sure. So in the beginning you're fixing the hard measure on G. Yeah. Yeah, the hard measure is fixed. The Riemannian measure. If you want the Riemannian measure is fixed. So the hard measure is fixed. And C of course depends on the choice of hard measure. So if you fix it, fix it also. Yeah. So choose a spanning spree. Uh, of, okay, so first write a tick. So so you have gamma, so you denote by M. Uh, then the, the best C that you compute is for a specific R measure or G? No, uh, I think. I mean, you, once you fix R measure, then if you vary the R measure, then you. Yeah. You know, you yeah, yeah you, you, when you vary the R measure, you, you vary C, but uh, you, I, I cannot get a better C if I choose it. Properly. I mean, so that means you are choosing the hard, some specific hard measure yeah. at the beginning and then you are choosing yeah. the best C. Yeah. yeah. But I'm, I'm not, I will not try to get a, a good C. I, I, I will just get something and you will see I, I'm wasting it. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm not doing it very efficiently. But okay, so let's write S to be just a, a continuum of K of gamma. S of gamma. And recall that the uh, gamma is isomorphic to the fundamental group of R for some, and R is a uh, uh, G alpha V simplicial complex. Again, V is the volume of M. And uh, now choose a, uh, choose a spanning tree for R. Choose a spanning tree for the one skeleton, so for the one skeleton of R. <coughs> Arbitrary. So you, 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 you want to, so you choose, you first choose a point, and then, uh, so you have some uh, simplicial complex here. Say that this is R, and then you, you choose a spanning tree. Arbitrarily, that's a spanning tree, and then <clears throat> for every edge which is not in the tree you add one relation. Then, which is a spanning tree, say it's T, then for every, every edge which is not belong to T, uh, put a relation. Uh, put a, a generator. So, for instance, if I see this, then I have a generator that goes like this. I have this edge, which is not in the tree, and so I have this edge, then I have, I go like this. So, and then, okay, of course, there are two choices to do it, but it's not so important, you choose one of them. So, we have a generator, and now for any in, in the special complex, you also have a, let's go like this, you also have, a, you also have simple, two, two simple things. So here I choose this tree generator, and now I have to choose a relation to collapse them. So for every, every, uh, two simple, 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 Choose, uh, uh, not choose, but uh, put a uh, 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 relation. Take the corresponding relation. And that's it. And now, if you recall, the number of uh, edges is bounded linearly by V. It's only what? 
we choose two times one over two times v, and the number of two simplices is also called the mean of the v. And uh, you see that the length of every relation is at most three. You can have a relation of length one or two or three, not, not more. And this shows you how this color is full of one. Okay, let me state another color. So, and by the way, sometimes you cannot do better than this. Uh, so, for some groups, it's known that you cannot do better than this. You cannot do it for arbitrary small volume, but if the volume is sufficiently large, you can 
is filled constantly many many folds that uh, uh, that uh, if you want uh, what he constructed uh, whenever whenever you have a, a non-compact three-dimensional hyperbolic manifold. So suppose you have something like this, which is a non-compact, but it has a cut, so it has finite volume. So what's the assumption is that you can actually cut the cast somewhere far away and glue a solid torus and make it a complete compact hyperbolic manifold. And you can do it farther and farther uh, and get a sequence of comfortably many compact hyperbolic manifolds so that in a sense converge to the non-compact one and, and they all have volume bounded by the volume of the non-compact one. So you have a comfortably many non-isomorphic. They will, in the picture they look similar, but they are not isomorphic and their fundamental group is different. So uh, you have comfortably many in dimension three bounded volume, so <coughs> but there is a classical theorem of one that uh, if uh, the symmetric space is not of dimension two and not of dimension three, then for any field, only finitely many manifold, irreducible uh, manifold of volume bounded by field. And this is a, in a sense, a quantitative statement. And why is this true? Okay, so I don't, I will not write the detail, I will tell you as an exercise, but you already know that if, uh, if you have a S manifold of volume bounded by C, then the fundamental group as a presentation with so few relations and generator and all the relations are shown. And then you just can count how many groups, how many groups you can create by, by this number of generator relation and all the relation of the most three. And it's an easy computation that it's behaved like a bit in the Can Thurston example only countable in or at least countable? No, it, it's countable in it. You can't yeah, it's countable. Yeah, it's countable. Okay. Thurston gave a very precise uh, description of uh, what are the volumes of hyperbolic tree manifolds and, uh, yeah, but it's countable. So, yes, and again, in some cases, uh, uh, this, this is, you can also get a lower bound for this number of the same time. So, so, and, and this is, now you see, you, you asked before why the conjecture cannot hold for dimension three. So, because the conjecture has this corollary, and we know that in dimension three, the, the example of, uh, so, so this is one evidence, but you can actually, you can see precisely, okay, so this, maybe this is the easiest way to see why the conjecture cannot be true in the relation state. So this is important because of, I mean, Wang's result said that is finite, mm -hmm. but you are giving a precise yeah. bound. Yes. yes. And, uh, okay, so what else? Okay, so why, okay, so now, <coughs> now I'm going to give you some hint why it's natural to believe, in, in some sense, why, why one would expect, or what's the approach to prove such a conjecture? So, let me call it classical definition for topology. Uh, a, a cover of the topological space by open sets is called a good cover of the uh, topological space X Sets to 
be contractible. And moreover, you want, whenever two sets intersect, you want them to intersect in a contractible set. And, and whenever you have a non whenever you have a non empty intersection of a uh, finite collection of sets, then it's contractible. If uh, uh, every intersection, every non empty intersection, Every non empty intersection of sets of the Tau is contracted. So you don't want to use sets like this, and also we don't want to use sets that intersect like this, or it's more, more complicated. If you want, wherever you have intersection of sets, then the intersection is contracted. Then it's called a good cover. <coughs> now, when you have a cover of the space, there is a notion of the nerve of the cover. So, The nerve of the cover is a simplicial complex. Uh, and uh, the vertices are just the sets of the cover. And whenever you have a non empty section, uh, it defines a simplex. So the nerve of the cover, the nerve of the cover. Uh, it's simplicial complex whose vertex is corresponds uh, to correspond to the sets, the open set of the camera. And uh, the K synthesis, and for any K, the K synthesis, uh, the K synthesis corresponds to uh, K tuples with non empty intersection. Okay? of sets which are empty So this is the level of the cover. And so just left our picture, so uh, or something like this, so you put a vertex in each set, and you join two vertices with the corresponding sets intersect, and, and then uh, if the corresponding three sets intersect, you, you, you construct the simplest, and, and then you get a special complex. <coughs> And the classical results for homotopy theory tells you that if you start with a good cover, then the nerve of the cover is homotopic to the original space. This is the theorem. Good cover, but the only proof that okay, this might be too. Right? 
الان هاتشرز بوك هذا سوري الان هاتشرز توك Yeah. 
what is epsilon thick? E epsilon thick means that the epsilon ball around any point is <coughs> intractable. <coughs> Which in opposite proportion is equivalent to say that it's isometric to an epsilon ball in the symmetric space. So <coughs> What, what is the can you please repeat it in epsilon cube? Yeah, I would like. Okay, I would like. So 
this one thing.
this will be the epsilon t part is this, and the epsilon t part is this. And we hope that we can control the topology of the thin part, of the thick part, using a good Kabul argument. And we hope to be able to control somehow the geometry, the topology of the thin part, by the algebraic information given by the Margulis level, which I'll discuss in the next lecture. <coughs> and we hope we could use a good cover argument to control the geometry, the topology of the thick part. Right information that, uh, to control the topology of Simba. This is the naive approach. The problem is that in reality. So first, we don't always understand the thin part so well. So in rank one, we, in rank one, we do. So I will, I will explain it next lecture. But in high rank, we don't. The thin part could be quite complex. So it's not as nice as this picture. Secondly, and this is even more serious, the boundary, if the picture is smooth, in reality, it could be very complicated. So this is what we hope to do, but there are complicated details to deal with. And so I'll finish the lecture now. Uh, maybe I have one minute just to sketch what I intend to do in the next lecture. So, so I have seven more lectures. And uh, so this was the introduction. In the second talk, I will explain the Mongolian schema, or what Arvinda uh, called the, the Mongolian Mongolian schema. Uh, so, second talk uh, will be about the Mongolian schema. And variants of it, and fixing the composition, and all this idea of how to decompose the manifolds. And then the third talk uh, would be about, uh, so in most of the talk, <coughs> I'm only considering manifolds. And I would like to do the same for orbifolds, but it's much more complicated. But there is one thing I could do for orbifolds, and uh, it's, it's just to bounding, bounding the number of bounding. The rank of lattices. Rank by rank. Uh, by rank, I, I mean, okay, rank could be yeah. used for many things. I mean, the algebraic rank, the, the, number, the minimum number of general rules. So, so there is a very. <coughs> so, in some sense, it's. Considering lat general lattices with torsion is more complicated. But when you just consider, when you just think about rank, you can do a much cheaper, uh, you can use much cheaper technique, and you get a very simple proof that the number of generators of a lattice is bounded by the volume. And this this is a, I think it's quite interesting and has a lot of application of its own. So I dedicate one lecture, and it uses a similar idea, but in some sense it's much simpler. But there is, okay, this will be the third talk. Uh, and then the idea here will not be sufficiently good for what we try to show here. So, fourth talk, uh, I will discuss uh, uh, some deformation results. I will explain 
how you can do how you can do the formation of tracks in in a uh, in, in locally symmetric spaces. See what. Uh, then the fifth talk, this will be, in some sense, technical, but I think a nice idea for cut zero spaces, and, uh, and it's more general than symmetric spaces. So fifth talk uh, will be about uh, how to construct sufficient contexts. So it won't be as easy as in the case here because we will do it for the thick part, which is a manifold with boundary, and we have to do it more carefully. Uh, then thick stock uh, is a non-uniform, non-uniform arithmetic uh, case. So, which we prove theorem one, and then seventh talk will be about theorem two, uh, bomber case. And uh, then in the eighth talk, I will hopefully start, I will, I will discuss uh, some more modern techniques uh, to study problem of concerning topology of lattices, uh, what people call IRS, environment random subgroups. So this is very nice 